Hi, this is Tom Santos with lesson nine, the final lesson of the flower detective. It has to do with observing your surroundings when you're in an establishment looking at different stuff to see what could help you to see what type of flower you should be selling and asking some questions. So let's get started. Observations you want to make is how the customer is weighing their ingredients. And there's a couple scales here. One's a balanced scale. On the right side of the scale, the weights would go on the left side, there'd be some sort of bowl where they would weigh the ingredients out as. Um, most places you see, especially in the bakery industry, will have a balanced scale. The other is an electric scale. The electric scale is a lot more accurate, goes into grams. If you see an electric scale, that usually tells you that that customer really is, is looking to get their ingredients weighed perfectly. Um, very, very often that the person who has an electric scale are very particular with water temperature and mixing times, things like that. If you don't see either one of these scales, try not to lecture, more suggest. And, you know, if they don't want to have a scale, any type of measuring device is better than none. Even a one cup is close to eight ounces is better than a couple handfuls. So. If you don't see a scale, remember suggesting a measuring device, even if it's a cup or a teaspoon, is better than just estimating things. Thing you'll see at every either bakery or pizza operation is a mixer. Uh, usually you'll see a 60 quart or 80 quart mixer. The 80 quart will usually have that little ring you see next to the mixer on that, that top picture there. When you mix in an 80 quart mixer, that, that could be pretty heavy. You could get a lot of dough in there and that could be close to 100 pounds. So usually you'll see that ring where they'll roll the, the bowl around to make it easier to handle. Uh, if you see a 60 quart mixer and they're mixing double zero flour, remember we had talked about the double zero flour is 55 pounds. When you add water to that, that's a lot of weight on a 60 quart mixer. That might be a good suggestion for the deep three Martin Farina flour which they can make smaller batches and, and get a better mix out of. On the side, we're showing some dig digital timers and dial timers. One thing about a timer is they work great for the first year and after that, they're a little bit inconsistent. So if a customer is having problems and you see the mixer is a little old, it could be they're over mixing the dough because they set the timer for eight or 10 minutes and it ends up mixing 12 or 15. And the picture of the 20 quart mixer with the guard, all new mixers have these guards too. It's a safety thing that was put in a number of years ago. Some of the older places you won't see that. And 20 quart mixers by and large, you're not gonna see in a pizza operation. Talk about the mixer attachments. I know we've talked a bit about that in the kitchen videos. Remember the dough hooks are for dough. Uh, the paddles are for soft wheat, dough hooks, hard wheat, by and large. Uh, the, the paddles, remember when we showed you the cake mix and the pie crust, and the dough hooks is when we were showing the all trumps. So dough hooks, pizza, bread, that type of, of product. Dough paddles would be for cakes, um, cookies, that type of product, or, or pie crust. I wanted to show you wire whisks. Wire whisks, mostly you'll see those used for whipped cream and, and exclusively for bakeries. You, you shouldn't be seeing wire. You, I doubt you'll see a wire whisk in a, uh, in a pizza operation. And, and they're also very good for angel food cakes. If you're in a bakery operation and it's getting around March or April, those wire whisks are very handy to make angel food cake. That might be something you could sell in. Ovens are a great way to tell you exactly what the customer is doing. And I'm going to start on the top here with the convection oven. Convection oven you can see mostly in a bakery or an in-store supermarket, small place. If you see a convection oven in a pizza operation, that probably means they're baking cookies or some pre-made frozen item in there because their oven, their pizza oven is probably set at 500 to 700 degrees. And they're not baking that. That's just not conducive to baking cookies or puff pastry or anything like that. And that's an opportunity to sell some of the products that General Mills offers, be it puff cookies. But by and large, you will not see that in a pizza operation. 
An impinger oven, on the other hand, you will see in pizza operations, almost exclusively in pizza operations. It's a conveyor type system. And what the customer does is make their pizza. They put it on a pizza screen and on a conveyor belt, that, that wire conveyor belt, it goes through the heating element and bakes anywhere between four and seven minutes. They're very consistent. And you'll notice that in an operation that has limited help or limited space, but those are very good ovens and, and you'll see them in every operation. Again, you could set, most of those operations aren't baking a Neapolitan style pizza. So if you're, you see an impinger oven, you're probably gonna be selling them a patent flour or offering them a patent flour or a high protein flour. A deck or real oven is exclusively for bakeries. I, you really don't see a lot of those in pizza places. There's six decks uh, or shelves that revolve in that oven. They're pretty large ovens, uh, make great bread, cakes, um, really more of a bakery type oven. In the bakeries in Utica, the Utica, New York area, they actually make a thing called a tomato pie. And in Rhode Island, they call that same thing a uh, pizza, a, uh, a bakery pizza. And what they do in, in the full sheet pan, they put a piece of dough and they put some tomato sauce and Parmesan cheese. So if you're ever in the bakery and they're not making uh, tomato pie or, or a pizza, uh, bakery pizza, that's always a suggestion you could make. The one on the left that's blue, a wood fired or gas oven, a lot of people assume that's just for Neapolitan style pizza, it really isn't. That's used for all types of pizza. Very consistent oven, make a wonderful uh, high heat or medium heat. It, it, it's all, it, it could do either one. It could do a high protein pizza, it could do a patent flour pizza, and it could do a great Neapolitan style pizza. If you're not sure, just look at the thermometer. If, if you see it's over 650 to 700 degrees over that temperature, probably doing a Neapolitan style pizza. If it's in the 500 to 600 range, it's probably uh, either a high protein flour like all Trump's balancer or patent flour. So the, your, your clue would be right there would be the temperature that the oven is set at. The next oven is a combination oven of a proof box and rack oven, and they also could be separate. Uh, proof box uses heat and steam to assist in controlled fermentation. So if you're making breads or rolls, you want those to rise in a controlled manner until there's the size you need to bake off. That's what a proof box does. You won't see that in a pizza operation unless they're doing an awful lot of bread. Rack oven, you'll see almost exclusively in in-store bakeries, supermarket bakeries, and you'll see it in a lot of regular bakeries too, but you won't see these by and large in pizza operations. And what they are is you roll a rack, uh, the rack either holds 15 pans or 20 pans and you roll it in and you can see on the bottom right hand picture there, it clicks into the top and then it revolves in a convection environment that heats the entire, entire rack. So if you're making a bunch of muffins or a bunch of cookies, you throw them in the rack and, and uh, set the timer and let it go. Very good if you're making a lot of one item. So you could put in 15 trays of cookies or 15 trays of muffins or something like that. It's very good at baking a lot of a lot of the same product at one time. And it's also good for bread and rolls, too, because most of them have steam and uh, cream cake items do very well in rack ovens. Some common kitchen items you'll see mostly in pizza operations, though the thermometer you'll see in bakeries too. The dough ball tray is exactly what it's called. It's where the dough balls after the dough is mixed and is rounded up. Depending on the size, you could put six dough balls in a tray or 15, uh, depending on what weight they are. And then they go into the retarder over, overnight or uh, a couple nights, depending on what type of dough they're making. We talked on an earlier flower detective about cross-nesting them, cross-nesting the dough trays to make the product cool quicker. Uh, thermometer, I know we, we had a whole thing on the dough, a flower detective about this. Um, if you see a thermometer, you know the operation is really serious about making a great dough. A couple other things, the pizza screen I talked on the previous slide, that's the pizza screen that would be used on a conveyor impinger type oven. But the pizza screens are also used in a lot of deck ovens too. So don't be surprised if you see them, but pizza screens are, are 
definitely always used in, in an impinger oven and probably 50% of the time in a deck oven. The oven peels, um, that's the one when, when I was talking about the Wonder Flour, that's what you would sprinkle on the one uh, on the oven peels to have the pizza slide off a little easier instead of semolina or cornmeal. And those are some oven cleaning brooms on the bottom there because as I said earlier, when you're sliding all those pizzas in and out of the oven, you do have to scrape or, or sweep the oven out at the end of the day uh, because there's leftover semolina or, or uh, cornmeal in there. Just a little bit about the refrigeration and cooling. Very important with bakeries and pizzerias. Uh, the first top left is showing you a walk-in cooler. That's mostly where the cheese, the yeast, uh, the proteins will be stored. One thing you want to notice if a customer is having a problem uh, with, with their dough, and it could be in, in same thing in pizza or it could be with a bakery. If they're storing their dough to retard it, near the door of a walk-in cooler. That door opens and closes a lot. That means that temperature is going to fluctuate and that dough is going to have an uneven rise. So if their dough is getting a lot of condensation, the dough is rising too quickly, and the dough is located right near that refrigerator door, make a suggestion that they store it a little farther away from that refrigerator door to give it a little better uh, cooling atmosphere. To the right, is a reach-in fridge. It's not a walk-in. You open the door and you reach in and all the products are there. Sort of like a, a big home refrigerator. Um, the top, would you, you would usually have your yeast, uh, some of your proteins on the bottom. They usually have shelves where you could slide in uh, trays of dough. Uh, showing you the inside of a walk-in freezer, th those are very cold and uh, usually they're they're very pretty packed in there and and not as much you're going to see, you won't see walk-in freezers as much in, in pizza. It has more of a bakery item. They'll make a lot of product up ahead and freeze it um, to use at a later date. And then there's the outside of a walk-in, uh, walk either refrigerator or freezer. I think that's the one at, at the Culinary Center. Um, when you see that, you know that operation is using uh, uh, a walk-in type of either freezer or cooler. But always important to to check the refrigeration and also check the temperature because, like I said, it, if that, temp that temperature, that door opens and closes a lot, it's hard to, and it's a larger space, it's hard to hold that temperature at 40 degrees. So that's one thing to be a good uh, flower detective to see where the dough is placed and also how the yeast is stored, especially if they're using uh, fresh yeast. You, you would want to make sure that yeast is, is in a plastic bag and properly stored rather than drying out. Here's a few pieces of equipment you may come across. Uh, the first one is a pizza dough press. And what that does, instead of hand stretching it, they take the dough ball and they put it in there and it, whatever size pizza they want, be it uh, 18 inch, 16 inch, it stretches the dough out to that. When you see a pizza dough uh, press, it's gonna give you a couple clues there. The first one is, probably labor. Uh, the second one, they might be using a pizza mix. If they're having that much trouble with labor, they might be using a pizza mix rather than flour. So when you see a pizza dough press, um, take a look at what flour they are using because it, it could very well be a mix. But more and more we're seeing, as, seeing the pizza dough press because of uh, the labor issues. Dough sheeter almost exclusively at bakeries and it goes back and forth. The, the middle there is rollers and the dough starts, if that dough sheeter was flat, the dough would start to left and the operator would have the sheeter go back and forth and would sheet the dough, say the dough was three inches wide, it would sheet it down to whatever size you want it be, a half inch, quarter inch. And it would do it sort of in a slow fashion gently. Um, but again, mostly in a bakery operation. Storage bins is where they store all their ingredients. Um, just wanted to show you a few of those. Almost everyone stores things in storage bins. Uh, anything in a 50 or 25 pound bag would be in storage bin. This is a brief recap of some of the things we went through on, on this lesson. Remember, if they don't have a scale, we, we try not to lecture, we sort of suggest. And uh, any sort of 
measuring device is better than no measuring device at all. Um, we talked about storing in the cooler, how they're stacking the dough trays. Condensation is always a clue that the dough is too warm. If they're having condensation issues, it's either the dough is coming too warm off the mixer or the dough is sitting around too long and, and developing more heat before it gets into the retarder. If they're getting a skin on their dough, on their dough balls, then it's ask them if they're oiling, putting a little bit of oil, very light oil on the dough prior to retarding. Uh, the rest of the questions we have gone through. One thing, when if they're prepping the pizza, that's always a good question. If they're getting a gum line, ask them when they're prepping the pizza, because if they're saucing the pizza, teasing the pizza an hour before it's going into the oven, that sauce is going to soak into the dough and create a gum line. So that's always a good question to ask. Also, if they're taking the dough out of the refrigerator at least a half hour before before they start making the pizza, because if you take a dough out of the refrigerator, a dough ball, and make it into the pizza and throw it right in the oven, you're going to get a lot of air bubbles in there because the dough needs a little time to temper in a, out of the refrigerator and, and sort of adjust to the room temperature. Here are a couple more clues and uh, tips from all the lessons, including this one. Garlic, um, I didn't talk about this before, but garlic and also cinnamon has a very negative impact on yeast. So you got to use care when mixing doughs, when you're adding garlic into that dough during the mix, as same with cinnamon. We talked about active and instant yeast, how they will yield very different results if not used correctly. Uh, product complaints, thermometer, one of the most, the, one of the easiest things you could do and in, in, to help a customer is get them to use a thermometer because that'll make their dough very consistent. And things you look for, what type of pizza, the crust thickness, mixing process, we all talked about um, ingredients and yeast, and especially the measuring of the water and dough temperature. Those are some things uh, always keep in mind when you're walking through or talking to a customer. I would be remiss if I didn't thank Eric Swenson, the senior creative production manager at General Mills, who was instrumental in putting this whole video production together of the flower detective, his editing skills. He did just a terrific job in bringing this series to life and uh, very talented individual who uh, took some raw, raw footage and, and edited it out and made it work seamlessly. So thank you, Eric. Uh, Carrie Wagner formatted 59 slides to create a much clearer communication um, for the whole series and, and thank you, Carrie. Well, I really hope you enjoyed the Flower Detective series. Uh, I had a lot of fun putting it together. Uh, hoped it helped you. Hoped it made it a little easier when you're selling General Mills flour. And as always, if you ever have a question, feel free to reach out to me, tom.santos at genmills.com. Thank you.